My name's Mick Hegarty. I'm Managing Director responsible for Innovation um, and Insight at GB Group. Um, at the risk of turning this into job title exchange rather than CX exchange, uh, GB Group didn't have anyone on its uh, management board with the name customer in the title uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and we've changed that now, so we have two. We have a colleague of mine who's responsible for customer experience across the whole business. Uh, and my job title, although functionally, I would say it's managing director of strategy and products and marketing and data. Uh, when I got offered the role, my boss said uh, it's called managing director of customer insight and customer innovation. And that is to remind me that my job is to listen to customers, understand what they want, and use that to drive our roadmap and innovation. Uh, and draw on that insight to shape our, our plans and our strategy for our business. Um, GB Group uh, is a specialist in identity data. It's quite a small part of the overall customer experience journey. But um, if you think about what Daryl was saying earlier, uh, if the essence of giving a great customer experience um, is knowing your customer uh, so that you can actually tell experience for them, identifying the customer so know who that individual is, is a really important first step. And as we'll see shortly, it's, it's quite challenging. Uh, GBG um, have been doing this for 15 years. Uh, so it's core to our business. Um, and what I'd like to do is share with you some results from some research we've done with Forrester. And the reason we did the research was that our roots are in helping businesses identify customers, typically to meet compliance or regulatory requirements. But what we've seen more and more over the last few years is a change in that requirement to be more focused on customer experience. And what we wanted to understand was what's driving that focus on customer experience and what does it mean for identity. Um, and in particular, um, we've seen um, financial institutions uh, taking that lead. Um, if I start perhaps by giving uh, an overview of the uh, research. Second. I might have the wrong clicker. I might just use this. So the research we commissioned was with Forrester. Um, and Forrester uh, surveyed over 300 institutions, or we got responses from over 300 institutions worldwide. Uh, we particularly focused on the UK, the US, China, um, Australia, and Singapore. Uh, and what we wanted to look at were how people were using uh, identity data as an organization, what was driving it, and what their plans were, so we could shape our plans for innovation. The data was split roughly 50-50 roughly, roughly between uh, traditional firms and um, fintechs or challengers, companies based, basically in the digital age. Um, and I don't know uh, you very well. Hopefully you might get to know you more over the next couple of days. Um, if it's not too uh, personal a question, can I ask how many people uh, identify as traditional firms, traditional financial institutions? Okay. And how many would identify as fintechs or challengers? Okay, so probably less than 50-50. How many are independent spirits who don't identify and are not going to be labelled? <laughs> right, okay. So we seem to have a, a heavier weight in the audience to traditional firms versus fintechs, um, but the sample was, was roughly 50-50. What, what we found from the data was um, some similarities. Uh, institutions of all kinds wrestling with the same types of problems, but also some marked differences both between traditional and fintechs, but perhaps uh, even more so between uh, practices and priorities in the UK versus the rest of the world. And what we'd like to do is share those with you. Um, the survey from Forrester was quite detailed. They asked over 90 questions. And although I'm going to go through quite a few uh, 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 slides covering the data, I'm not going to go through all, all, all 90, you'll be relieved to hear. We'll, we'll focus on two main areas. The first is the organisational focus adopted by the institution who actually was responsible for the customer experience and managing the journey. Um, and then the how. How did they go about it? So what approach were they adopting? What were they doing currently? And what were they planning to change? Um, and what I'd like to do is share those with you. And actually, what we'd also like to do um, is get some of your feedback as we go. So at a couple of points, I'd like to get kind of your take on what you've heard uh, and some of the challenges that you might see. Okay, so let me start then by looking at um, who in the organisation does this. Most, well, the fintechs would typically be smaller, but as you can imagine, the traditional institutions uh, were quite significant in size. And what we wanted to understand was who had the accountability, who made the decisions, who was driving the strategy. Um, and what we saw 
um, was quite a difference between uh, the UK and the rest of the world. Uh, so in particular, we saw a much more centralised approach in the organisations in the UK, um, whether that was done as part of a CX team or specifically um, a UX and creative team, a much more central approach in the organisation to managing customer journeys, managing onboarding and delivering a, a great customer experience. In uh, the rest of the world, uh, so just a reminder, that was America, China, Singapore and Australia, uh, much more functional ownership. Now, we're not quite sure what this means, whether it means um, it's more strategic for UK institutions or whether it's a uh, reflection of a stronger focus on customer experience, uh, looking at the customer holistically rather than, say, a more siloed product approach. Perhaps it is that in the rest of the world, uh, individual divisions with individual products are, are creating their own journeys, but UK brands in the financial sector have decided to look at customers' needs across the whole portfolio. Um, we didn't see huge differences when we dived down into the UK data, or, or when Forrester dived down into the UK data, between um, fintechs and uh, traditional uh, financial institutions. Some variation, uh, a stronger focus on a, a CX team um, in the fintechs, um, and interestingly, a stronger focus on uh, UX and creative uh, from the um, traditional institutions. And I wondered if that was partly around uh, traditional institutions trying to reposition themselves. There have been challenges with trust, as Daryl was mentioning earlier, and as you all know better than I do. Uh, so if communicating uh, an experience is a higher priority in, tra in traditional institutions. So... Um, what we then did was um, look at why uh, people were focusing on customer experience and um, what were the uh, priorities for improving customer experience uh, over the next uh, 12 months. Not surprisingly, driving revenue growth as a key priority everywhere. So uh, it was a high-profile uh, strategic driver for businesses um, across the world. What we did see quite a marked difference, though, was on the focus in the UK versus the rest of the world on cost reduction. So, you know, a much higher priority, the number one driver uh, of focus on customer experience in UK institutions was to reduce costs. We also saw that reflected when we talked to people about improving operational effectiveness. How do you streamline your processes? How do you streamline your accountability in your organisation? Uh, and focus on customer experience to drive that. And the UK was the highest scorer globally on, on that aspect. So for both cost and operational efficiency, um, customer experience was seen as was a really key thing. That, that's great. Being more efficient uh, is something that uh, any business will want to do. Um, but we're just trying to understand the relative balance of that versus focusing on revenue opportunities uh, in the UK. We don't know whether that's because the UK perceives as a higher traditional cost base or more efficiencies to, to, to drive, um, or whether there is less uh, confidence, if you like, about revenue opportunities, perhaps reflecting our economic conditions, but certainly a, a, a different picture. So given that focus on costs, um, what we wanted to do, fairly selfishly, was understand how clients' investment uh, in improving digital experience is going to change um, and what's happening this year and next year. Um, and again, we saw a difference between the UK and the rest of the world. Looking in the past 12 months, uh, really a quite substantial uh, difference in the number of people who are increasing their digital budgets. So, so twice as many uh, traditional firms uh, outside the UK are growing their digital budgets relative to um, uh, those in the UK. And that seems to continue into next year. You know, eight out of ten traditional financial institutions globally um, are going to grow their digital budgets, um, whereas, you know, it's less than half in the UK. Again, we don't know if that's a difference in strategies uh, or um, a difference in financial constraints. Um, and it's interesting, if you look overseas, there's actually not much difference between the uh, traditionals or the fintechs. So both uh, focusing significantly on driving their growth. Um, we'd like to understand this a little bit better. So what I'd like to do uh, is ask you for your views. Um, so we've uh, tried to make this interactive at a couple of points. Um, when I was talking to my colleagues about how many people would be interested to coming and hear uh, my pitch, they said about 10. Um, so we may not have enough clickers for everybody, but on your table, 
Um, it, there are a number of clickers that you can see. So if you could pick those up. Um, and what we should get is the data coming up live as we speak. So the question I'd like to ask is, why, why do you think in your business that um, digital experience uh, budgets are not increasing at the same rate as the rest of the world? Is it because, A, we're already there, we've made the investments and we believe we deliver a, a great customer experience? Is it because, B, customers in the UK are different for some reason to customers in the rest of the world and therefore we don't need to invest in experience in the same way? Uh, is it, C, uh, we've got a lot on? We've got regulation, we've got GDPR, we've got you know, new financial regulations coming, coming out of our ears. We've got a lot of things to address. Uh, or is it D, the, econ the economic opportunity in the UK is different, and that's actually driving our investment choices. So if we can open up the voting. I don't see if I press the click now, that should go, whoops. I'm sorry, let me just... I might need my beautiful assistant to do a repoll. <laughs> okay. That's a shame. Uh, so sorry about that. As always in life, it worked perfectly in the uh, in the in the uh, earlier run, and then doesn't work when we do it today. Um, when I come to the end, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the follow-up for this, which is we're making the report available, and we'd like to engage customers um, in webinars and other conversations. Um, but if possible, we've, we've got to stand out here, and we're here for the next two days, uh, and we would really welcome the opportunity to get your views, because um, partly, obviously, we're using this information to make the industry aware of the issue, but this is actually what guides our innovation priorities and our, and our focus on our sectors. So I would love to understand your perspectives. Um, that's the organisational aspect. We then um, moved on to uh, look at um, the approach. So understanding who in an organisation is looking at that. What is the approach that customers are using uh, to identify their end customers, whether for traditional compliance and regulation needs or to drive a better customer experience? Um, now, this may not be a surprise to those of you in the room, but we were quite taken aback by this next finding um, which is that we asked, or, or Forrester asked financial institutions, are you concerned about your ability to identify your applicants and your customers? How many of you are concerned that you can't accurately identify people? Given you know, the history of compliance and other regulations and the focus on customer experience. And what really surprised us was, look at traditional firms. Um, the US was actually the leader in this space, but even in the US, more than two-thirds of financial institutions said we're concerned about our ability to identify customers. And looking outside the US, significantly higher figures. So that's a really high uh, number of, of, uh, of a sample of over 300 customers saying we're not sure that we can identify our customers with confidence. So whether that's for a compliance issue or I want to give them a great experience but I need to know who they are, that's quite a challenge. And then again... It's actually worse as we start to look in the fintech and the challenger market. They were even more concerned, whether that's because um, they don't have the legacy data or the legacy relationships that financial, traditional financial institutions have. Um, but for them, it was seen as an even uh, bigger challenge. And we did not expect this. Uh, I am old enough, sadly, to remember the 1993 New Yorker cartoon that the great thing about the internet is nobody knows you're a dog. Um, that was 25 years ago, uh, and we know identity is a hard problem to crack, and sometimes new technologies complicate things as much as they simplify it. But 25 years on, this basic problem of identifying your customer with confidence seems to be a major problem for financial institutions around the world. So why is it so hard? Um, we asked customers well, what uh, challenges they were wrestling with. Uh, we knew data privacy would be a challenge. It's, it's a constraint and a concern for... Uh, all of us. Um, uh, but what surprised us was that um, it was only third in the UK. The complexity of managing different ID documents and managing dynamic identity, uh, uh, new sources of data, not just static data, uh, came out higher. So there are some real challenges that uh, customers are facing with that. So Forrester then asked, 
okay, so how do you think you stand versus your competitors in the industry? And again, we saw the UK being quite different to the rest of the world. So starting with the basic question of validating a customer's registration details, um, feeling behind the competition versus feeling ahead of the competition, the UK was markedly less confident in its competitive position versus, versus uh, uh, other competitors. Now, whether that's a modesty in the UK, whether it's a, a confidence level in overseas com competitors, it's fairly marked. Forrester asked a second version of that, which is, okay, what about when the customer's controlling the application? If you're starting to have uh, customers identifying using an app on their smartphone or what have you, where are you and your innovation there? A slightly slow, closer score, but again, compared to um, the rest of the world, uh, the UK uh, felt that it was not ahead of its competition. And the final question we asked them was, what about um, digitally verifying that customer? So making sure that you can confirm that customer uh, is who they say they are for uh, PEPs and sanctions rules or for anti-money laundering. Uh, and that was probably the strongest score where UK firms, both traditional uh, and fintechs, um, felt they were behind competition. So there's this sense that competitors are, are ahead. We then asked, okay, so um, what is the barrier to you starting to address that? Um, and it was quite interesting because um, we saw a marked difference here between uh, traditional firms and fintechs in the UK. So for traditional firms, the real challenge was the skills available them to create those experiences. So traditional firms were telling Forrester, we don't have the people and skills to create the experiences that we want to. Um, for fintechs, a very different problem. It was the maturity of the data that was available to them that was the biggest barrier. So you can't win, really. You've either, it feels like you're either rich in data uh, and potentially able to create customer experiences, but you don't have uh, the people and skills to, to drive that. Or if you've got the talent and the new technologies and what have you, you don't have the data, or maybe it's the relationships with customers. So challenges on both sides, but more extreme than um, the rest of the world. And again, the absolute scores higher than the rest of the world. Okay, so we then wanted to say, okay, well, let's turn the thinking to action. What are you actually doing to drive customer experience? Um, and a fairly rounded picture here, no, no sort of dramatic outliers. Um, as you might expect, traditional firms are focusing more on digital experience. Um, and uh, digital and, or fintech uh, players are focusing more on um, improving their traditional channels. Uh, partly, I think that reflects that there is no one magic answer. Customers choose their channels and they want a multi-channel experience. So they expect uh, uh, traditional and fintech uh, suppliers to both offer uh, the full range of, of, of channel options. We then looked at one other question, which again caused us quite a surprise uh, and showed a, a difference between the UK and the rest of the world. So selfishly, again, focusing on innovation uh, because customers' uh, requirements drive our investment in innovation. Um, we see the world of identity as being complex. Uh, we have traditionally uh, ha had a model based largely on static data, knowing who people are, where they live, what they say on the electoral roll, etc. Um, but we know there's lots of risks around static data and security breaches, etc. have made that worse. And what's becoming possible now are lots and lots of new ways of using different types of dynamic data so that you get a rounded picture of customers that you can be very confident in. Um, and we believe that there is no one magic bullet that we can see. But firstly, there are a number of routes that are worth exploring. Uh, and secondly, a combination of new technologies will make a difference. When Forrester asked uh, customers around the world, financial institutions around the world, about three of the leading types of technology, so facial recognition, seeing starting to go mass market now with things like the iPhone X, um, automated document capture and validation, using advanced scanners that can do uh, uh, verification but can also do tamper detection, etc. Um, and then starting to use social media data, so you start to get dynamic data to help you triangulate. Really quite a, quite a shocking uh, difference in, in the number. And again, we don't understand why this is. Um, so firstly, 
the UK less interested in all three of these technologies than competitors in the other four regional markets. Um, and then a really strong uh, uh, indicator from traditional firms that they don't see these as, these as areas that they feel they want to prioritise for, for investigation. So 60% of traditional financial institutions are saying facial recognition is not something they're interested in exploring. Now again, um, what we'd like to do uh, is to understand that in detail, but I suspect we might not be able to. Uh, if we could try one more time um, and just see if it's possible to understand why is it that we're not um, making these investments in the future? No, I'm sorry. So I'm afraid the number's, the number's stuck at zero, so um, we'll have to go straight on. So just wrapping it up, our key takeaways from that, um, firstly, a marked difference between global financial institutions and UK institutions, and within that, um, UK traditional financial institutions seem to be further behind uh, competition and less focused on innovation, and that latter part in particular means that that gap risks getting worse. So, you know, is there a risk that UK traditional financial institutions will fall behind? And three big takeouts. Uh, firstly, 86%, nearly 9 out of 10 globally, uh, financial institutions, old or new, from a sample of 320, uh, uh, have said they are still concerned about identifying customers. Some positive things for the UK. You know, a strong central focus, which suggests to us it's a strategic priority and it's looking at the customer in the whole rather than a product stovepipe basis. That sounds great. And a strong focus on... Uh, create a good experience and a good user experience with a good creative element to it. But a number of real concerns. A focus on cost reduction, absolutely right. Digital uh, and other technologies provide great scope for uh, reducing costs. But not much focus on, on growth or not seeing the opportunities for revenue growth. Uh, secondly, relative to competitors uh, in other markets, less companies are growing their uh, uh, revenues this year, their investment in technologies this year, and again, less are growing next year compared to global financial institutions. Thirdly, a much stronger feeling that UK institutions are behind the competition compared to uh, global players. And honestly, uh, just hard to understand uh, less interest in new technologies, whether that's budget-driven or don't actually feel the technologies will make a difference the UK, and in particular UK tra traditional financial institutions, are much less interested in some of the key technologies that we think will make a difference. So, um, we'd love to find out more. Um, we'll be around for the next two days, uh, and hopefully we'll catch, catch you on the stand. I'm sorry the technology didn't work. Uh, we'd like to share all the findings with you. Um, as an identity company, we obviously know where all of you live. Uh, so, uh, we are emailing you all. Uh, not really, we don't really. Which we do. Um, we're emailing you all the details of the report uh, and a, we a website which we've got this on. Uh, and if you can, we'd love you to join us in a webinar with uh, Jacob Morgan, the senior analyst from Forrester, who produced all these res results, and a number of our customers. And we would love to hear more about your experiences and challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Maybe, since the digital technology didn't work, we can try with the physical technology. Maybe we can go with Love raising of hands. <laughs> because I'm interested in the question. Do you want to put up your options again? Very good. Let's go back. So we go to... One second, sorry. Well, let's pick this one. So, why do we think we're building the behind in building for the future? Uh, show of hands is less anonymous, so sorry about that. But... People in the room think that compared to uh, other markets globally, the UK is already there in terms of customer experience. Okay, so we're not, we're not, we're not already done it. What about UK consumers? Are UK consumers different to the rest of the world and therefore um, we don't feel that we need to meet their expectations to the same level? Okay, so we have some people seeing that. Um, is it simply the other priorities that the business has, the amount that people have on currently? That looks like a healthy proportion. So basically, just too much on, too many demands for budget, uh, too many demands for the key people who can drive change. 
Uh, and then finally, just a reflection of the current operating environment. Okay, a few there. So that really looks like basically the industry has so much on its plate, um, it's really just a question of investment in priority. So to, to be honest, I was expecting C to be the majority, but why is that the case? What do you think is always taking the budget and the money and the investment away from these areas into other things? I, I know much less than the rest of the people in the room, but I mean, given the hangover of the last uh, eight to ten years and the need to rebuild trust, the amount of structural change that's driven in banks, uh, the amount of specific financial regulations that have already put in place and the new ones that are coming, and the uh, advent of new forms of competition who are very agile and nimble and are getting a lot of attention, uh, and then additional generic uh, challenges like GDPR. So probably quite a lot going on at once um, and, and, and very heavy pressures on costs, um, you know, significant legacy cost bases that are difficult to change. Uh, so probably quite a lot of heavy engineering uh, uh, and, and projects and programs already going on in, in most of these companies, I would guess. Great. Is there any question for Mick? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. So